the name of the talk is You Got Microservices, Now Secure Them in Case You Can't Read. Uh, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. That's all the coordinates. You can find me in all sorts of cyber places like Ingress or GitHub or a whole bunch of other places this, at the Steve. And that's a zero because I'm elite like that. And then I give this talk sometimes with Stian, who's the author of Key Cloak, which is what we're going to be talking about today. So any time that you're going to ask me some, how many of you are crypto heads? Great, only one, good. So anytime somebody goes into deep crypto stuff, I would usually pass it over to Stian. I'm the person who likes to consume Key Cloak. Stian is the person who wrote Key Cloak, and so he knows all about all the low-level details on the tickets and all the stuff that gets passed around. Um, and again, those are the slides, the URL for the slides. So the goals for this talk is talk a little bit about microservices. How many of you are doing microservices? Okay, how many of you have seen a talk at least about microservices? All right, so I'm gonna go through those slides relatively quickly. There's not very many of them anyway, and I'm just gonna emphasize some of the key points. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about centralized authentication, and then most of this is gonna be demo and seeing it in action. Everybody good with that? We're good? Yeah? So I'm also a very informal speaker, in case you couldn't tell. I like being asked questions during the talk. I will not save time at the end for people to save up their questions. So if you have questions in the middle, unless you're sitting right there, or, no, I can still see your hand, but you, right there, you're like right under the lights. You're like somebody coming in like one of those horror movies or those action movies that comes out and it's just a silhouette. So I may not see your hand if you raise it, okay? But for everybody else, I can see your hand or you can just interrupt. Um, so this is microservices. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was a good dad joke, get it? Micro sushi, micro, you got it, nobody's laughing. Jokes are supposed to be funny. Um, this is the idea again about microservices. I'm gonna go through it relatively quick because almost everybody says they know it. Monolith, oh actually I'll give this side some love. Monolith, microservices. Everything bundled up into one big application. How many of you are Java developers? Raise them high. Okay, how many of you are anything but Java developers? So is that Python? Keep your hand up if you're Python. Okay, so basically the, no JS. Okay, so it's mostly Java developers with a smattering of Python and Node.js. Oh, Perl. You write your web app still in Perl? Really? Where's Harrison? Her you should talk to Harrison. He's written micro, he wrote a Perl app in microservices in uh, Perl as well. A little microservice one. You guys should mind meld. Not with me, though. Um, anyway, but I still love Perl. No offense. So, but for most of us, this is what we did. Even this is Django, right? This could be Django as well. Django's a monolith, right? And this is most of us, this is our big war ear file. And the idea with microservices is you break it out, each area of concern into a separate service, into a separate application, what we would usually call an application, right? So I don't want to get into the debate about how big a microservice is. I think that debate is pretty much settled, which is it's an area of concern. It, it's a, like the shopping cart service. It's the, um, the user service. It is not one... Some people still do it, but it is not one function per service, which is what some people used to argue. Right? Is everybody in agreement on that? Yeah? And the, the key part with these microservices is this service is owned by a cross-functional team. Right? So this is usually owned by a, whole, a very large team. These are usually the two pizza size teams. Does everybody know the two pizza rule? Comes out of AWS. Their size of their teams is usually two pizza, whatever you can feed with two pizzas. That's an appropriately sized team, right? And so this usually includes a front-end designer. It may include a middle, and it includes a middleware person. It includes a database. I think when these are done most effectively, they also usually include a sysadmin as well because they should be part of that process. So that's some of it. I think the key parts for today's is distributed services rather than a monolith. Breck, best, I already said this one, so we'll skip that. No sneaky backdoors. Right? And this is where it come, this, the stuff that we're going to talk about today becomes important. There's no sp sneaky back doors. Everything must go through either APIs or a messaging service. There's no, like, I'm going to do an in-memory call back behind the scenes. Right? You have to, everybody is a consumer of everybody else's API. And there's no specific technology required. Right? That is, in some of the largest companies I've been to, part of the reason why they're adopting microservices is they're tired of teams arguing about what the te best technology is to use. Right? Because what happens at a lot of large companies, some of which are here in attendance, is 
they will say, we are a Java shop. Everybody must use Java. And then there's a bunch of teams who want to use Node. And they think Node is actually good for their problem space. And they can't, and so there's frustration, and there's arguing. And in a microservices model, that actually becomes more acceptable to do. Anything shocking that I've said so far? No? So some architectural patterns. This is a very simple microservice. Should I go faster through this? Shout out if you say, if you think I should. You think yes. If anybody does it faster, so anybody think I should go, this is just the right pace. Nobody thinks this is just the right pace. I should go faster? Yeah. Okay, good. So that's, my, that's some architectural patterns. Great. Okay, so this is the part where we get to security. So what we used to do, and this is all you Java people will definitely recognize this, and Python people from Django, this is probably what you do as well. You have a monolith where all the authentication used to happen in the app server tier. Right? Because everything was in that app server, and it was clustered with all the fancy clustering technology, you would use your app server to do your authentication. That's one of the reasons people love Django. It's got this nice central authentication. Is that correct with what most of you are doing with your monoliths? Yes? Yes. Right? You, will that work if each every, each every service is its own app server? You cannot cluster them together. Or what if you're using Python and Java? You can't use, everybody here is of course using JBoss, if you, you can't use your JBoss authentication to do your authentication for your users. So the new, what you, the new fancy way, because you all like to be new and fancy, is you have an authentication service just like all your other services. Right? It is a microservice, so your authentication is a service. It should be distributed and fault tolerant just like all your other services. It should be able to scale independently. Right? You might have more or less load. You want to be able to scale that dynamically. And it should have a standard way to interact. Because we cannot require that everybody is using some sort of Java technology. We can't say everybody's core in. in. <laughs> we, and we can't say that everybody's Python. It's not Node. You have to have some standard that you have to interact with it all. So how do I get my hands on this new hotness? How many of you have heard of StormPath? One person? Two people, a couple people. If you've been to shows, you've seen them. This is uh, central authentication as a service. Right? So it, you basically have someone else as a service, and they handle all your authentication needs. Another one is Auth0. That's another service that you can use. Because a lot of, the reason I'm showing some of these other things as well is because a lot of what I'm talking about today, I'm going to demo it with Keycloak, but it's the same patterns and the same ideas that you would use with any of these services, and that you would probably need in any service that you have. What I'm going to be showing today is the free and, source op free and open source project from Red Hat called Keycloak. It was also just released just as Red Hat SSO. So up until, I think, a couple weeks ago, you could only use the open source project bits. Now you can also buy this and install this the same way you install RHEL. And that's as much commercial talk as I'm going to do. Does anybody else want to hear me do more sales pitchy and marketing kind of things? You sure? I thought this was like exactly what this audience was looking for. Right? So what's the idea with Keycloak? It's open source identity and access management. The basic idea is you have some sort of thing that you want, an app that you've written. It can be HTML5. It could be a mobile app. It needs to, you want to have centralized authentication. So what happens is this app talks to Keycloak, says, is the authentication happens with Keycloak. Keycloak looks in the user database. That could be Active Directory. I'll show you all the different places that can be later in the talk. It says, yep, that's the right username and password. I'm going to give back a token to the application. It actually gives back two tokens. It gives back a valid token and a renewal token. The valid token says, yes, this user is who they say they are. Keycloak actually does more than just open ID, and I'll talk about that in a second. It actually, no, it does open ID more than OAuth. We do more than just OAuth, OK? And then that token can then be used. These services have been registered with this Keycloak server so that they share a secret. That token can then be used to authenticate against the different services, and it can pass all the way through. Does everybody get that idea? This is a pretty standard, yeah? The token is passed through every service, so every service, you don't need to authenticate in each service, right? You don't. As a matter, and you don't even, once you've, once you've gotten that token, this service will not talk back to that server. But 
service three, will it, will it, self, will it talk to keystroke in order to? No. No. So the, the question was, service three, does it need to talk back to Keycloak to authenticate that user? No. When this service was set up, it was set up to, it's got the shared secret with the Keycloak server. And so that token is valid to any service that gets passed around. And you'll see this example later, where in my code I have something that does this. And what happens is in this service, it grabs the token out of the, the request and passes it on to its next request. Does that make sense? Yeah, question. So the way that's handled is, yeah, there's a, there's a very short lifetime. And that's what that renewal token is about. So the, there's the lifetime of the actual auth token. And then there's the lifetime of your renewal. And so every time that, if that expires, if the auth token expires, it goes back to Keycloak and says, go get me a new token. When that renewal token goes away, it's got to actually go back and you've got to log back in again. Yeah. Okay, so the question was, um, why, what is the deal between service two and service three? Is that a good way to summarize it? Yeah, so the idea with this one is, I'm making a request into service two. Service two, to, get, to fulfill its request, actually needs to talk to service three, and we actually want to put some sort of authentication and authorization around service three. We don't want to do a whole different username and database just for service three, we want it against this. So it's going to pass that token along, and then this service can say, is this in the correct role that I can allow it to do the things it wants to do, without this having to go back to here and put in a role and do all that other stuff. It's a way to have all your different services be able to use one set of tokens to say is what role and everything is the user in. Does that make sense? Kind of? As we go through the demo, maybe it'll make more sense. Well, I already got you. Hold on. Let's go in the back. Yeah. So that's part, I'll get to that in a bit. That's part of the open ID, not the OAuth. Open ID actually, well, we'll get to it in a second. But I'll just say it now anyway, since you've asked, and why make you wait. Um, the, the token that we pass is not just, yes, this user is who they say they are. It actually also passes in roles and other information with it. Because it's open ID. OAuth is just like, yes, this user is who they say they're, they are. And that's it, right? Open ID actually allows you to put more things in the package that goes across, which is things like what's their role, what's their name, all that other stuff that you can pass along as well. You had a question as well? Same question? Is that because you were sitting close together and it was like a mind meld thing, you think? OK. And uh, wait, before you, I answer yours, I just want to see if there's anybody else. Yeah? Uh, is Open ID or Open ID Connect? Open ID Connect. Secret. Yeah. Okay, so that's one of the things that Stian knows the real. The question was, what about this won't work with HTML5 or shared secrets or something like that? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. So this is one of the parts where Stian would, in his, in his Norwegian voice, because he's Norwegian, he's probably like enjoying the midnight sun right now. Um, he would talk about how yes, it actually works, and I don't get how it works. I understand your the idea that you're saying, and it's the part that gets me, but I'm the developer part, and I trust that Stian knows what he's doing. And it does do something, and maybe we'll cover it, and maybe you'll see it when I show some of the code demos. I don't know that part in depth enough to speak and say, because the worst thing I could say is, well, yes, it does, it uses blah, 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 when I don't know what I'm saying. And then you'd be like, that guy's a loser, and I don't believe anything. So I know that Stian, I've seen Stian give that talk, and I keep saying to Stian, please write up how this happens. Because the other thing that a lot of people ask and I've, wh why is it that we don't have to keep going back and forth between these? And I, he keeps telling me the answer, but I need to read the answer for it to stick in my brain. So, sorry. That, that was a long-winded way of saying, I don't know, but trust me. <laughs> okay? Any other questions? We're all good? Okay. We have an hour, so this is nice and comfortable. Um, authentication. So Keycloak deals with authentication. It safely stores passwords. This is one of the huge things I love. So everybody here know what two-factor authentication is? Who doesn't know what two-factor auth is? OK, how many of you have turned two-factor auth on everything you have? When you, if there's the ability for two-factor auth, do you turn it on? Everybody does? Because if you don't, you should. I've had, since I've started turning it on for all my accounts, 
I've had at least three different hacks I've seen on my accounts that were, that were thwarted by two-factor auth, where the second-factor auth, like Facebook will pop up and say, here's the auth code you asked for. I was like, I never asked for that auth code. Right? So there's no way for, they're, they, they're reduced to the level of, did you guys hear what happened to that guy from um, Black Lives Matter, one of the organizers? They actually, because he had two-factor auth turned on all his things, they actually hacked his phone. So they actually went, I think he was, a, they figured out he was a Verizon customer. They went in, bought a phone, auth, uh, authorized it with Verizon, because Verizon didn't make that hard to do, and then proceeded to get all his email and set up the two-factor auth. And so he started getting, they got started getting all of his two-factor auth. With um, Keycloak, turning on two-factor auth is as simple as flipping a switch. Saying these accounts require two-factor auth, and then when people come in, they will be presented with the QR code, and they can use Google Authenticator or whatever they need to set that up out of the box. How many of you here, are, is everybody here a developer? Yeah? Anybody not a developer? What are you then? Oh. It's fine, you can stay. Um, so how many of you want to implement your own two-factor auth? You do want to implement it yourself? You want to write the code to do that? You are a better, you did? How much fun was that? It was not fun at all. Like, and then I wouldn't even trust it if my team did it. I'd be like, that's like if when people write two-phase commit code. I'm like, that's why I use a database, because those people know what they're doing. So that is one of the reasons right there. I don't want to write that code, and it comes right out of the box with it. There's also customizable flows where you can do all sorts of other stuff. And it also does single sign-on, which you would expect, though. Um, it uses OpenID Connect. And it uses SAML for those of you stuck in web services hell. How many of you, the Java users here, is, are stuck in that? Capital W web services? Yeah, my condolences. Um, so you can use this also for SAML as well. And it also, you can also make a Kerberos SSO bridge, right, which is real old school, but works. Um, clustering, it comes out of the box with scalability, right? It also has uh, high availability. And this is an implementation detail. So someone came up beforehand and asked me, is this going to be a Java talk? I'm using Java as my programming technology, because that's what I use. And yes, Keycloak is built on top of JBoss EAP or Wildfly, whichever one you use. It's built on top of that, but that's an implementation detail. You, it's not required to use it. OK? Yeah? Can you use Keycloak as a separate, not in, in a JBoss, or to run it as, a, as, as an own server? It, yes. What do you mean? Oh, well, so the question was, can you run it as its own server? It's a war file. So you have to have some server to put it in, but it, it's not, it doesn't have to be our server. You can actually take the war and deploy it to other things. I've, I've seen Doc on it. I haven't read it. I'm too lazy to try to even think about doing that stuff. So does that, I guess I should give that background story. Why I got interested in Keycloak, I'm actually an OpenShift evangelist. I am not a JBoss person. Um, and the reason I got excited about this was because I figured out how easy it was. When I started writing microservices, I figured, oh my god, how am I going to do authentication? This is a real hassle. And then I came across Keycloak, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome as a developer. And that's the main point of my talk, is to show for you as a developer how awesome this is. Sorry, sysadmin. It's not to show you how awesome it is. I guess the nice part for you is you could tell your users to use this, and you can kind of trust that they're doing the right thing. right? So if, you, if there's a question you have about, well, that doesn't seem awesome as a developer, ask me, OK? So I'm not going to show you any of these slides, because we'll show them in the demo later. But there's nice web UIs is all you should take from that. Um, client adapters. So out of the box, it comes with the new version, which I don't have here. But the newest version has Java and Node.js adapters out of the box. For Python, you probably have to use one of the OpenID providers. But there's standard. That's the part about standards again. This isn't some custom, uh, custom protocol, which I think OAuth 0 or Auth0 uses. This is just standard OpenID Connect. So as long as there's a library in your language that does OpenID Connect, you can use it with Keycloak. Okay, if you don't want to use our adapters or anything like that. So, or SAML. <laughs> um, so it's also got an SPI interface. And I, I, don't I told Steen I don't like this name. What it basically is is plugins. Right? So Keycloak aims to be an out-of-the-box solution for everybody. Like, you just install it and go. But crazy as the world is, some people have custom requirements. right? And so that's why there's SPIs. So there's plugins for Keycloak. You can have things like user stores, user federation, authentication. All those things are pluggable. We had a, talk, a question once about somebody who says, does Keycloak support eye scans? And we're like, no. 
we haven't written that in yet, but there's nothing that wouldn't stop someone from writing a plugin for eye scans, right? Basically, whatever the hardware is, it spits something out, and you can write that plugin, and then you can use it with Keycloak, right? And right now, those are written in Java. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Sorry. What is the default user store? Let me see if you just gave me a softball. No. The, I'll show you in a bit what the default user stores are. By default, the, what I'm using, I'm just using the in-memory one. So I think it's using whatever the in-memory one is. Um, you can use whatever user store you want, and I'll show you some of the ones later. Is that okay? Um, you can theme it, because not everybody wants theirs to look the same. I'll show you our themed one later. So it also does identity brokering, and this is the other reason why I loved Keycloak. Because I didn't want to write on my app all the pieces to plug in all these parts down here. The GitHub, the Facebook. I'll show you later. Basically, you put your app ID and your app key into the Keycloak interface, and you turn it on, and it works. And it automatically just shows up on the page. How many of you have actually put those buttons on your page? Like authenticate with Git, uh, GitHub or authenticate. Have any of you done that? How many of you wanted to do that, then looked at how hard it was, or just felt lazy enough like me that you're like, yeah, that'd be really cool. I'm not wasting my time on that. How many of you thought that? Thank you for not making me feel dumb. Um, so th that is one of the other great parts about Keycloak. So here's the question you were asking, basically. Um, it, for where you can put the data in it, you can put it in LDAP, of course. You can put it in a relational database. So there's Postgres and I think MySQL right out of the box. Probably an Oracle one, though I don't know. The big one that a lot of people have is Active Directory. And if you want it, that can actually be two-way Active Directory. So you can create a user in Keycloak, and it will create it in Active Directory. Most people do not want that feature, just because they don't want their developers creating users and doing that stuff. But if you desire it, you can use Keycloak to front your Active Directory. Any questions about that? We still good? Demo time. So that's it for the slides. So if you have questions right now, go. I'm so clear and good that nobody has a question. I love that. Uh, or I'm so confusing that everybody's like, I don't even know what to ask. Yeah, Josh. Um, so is the retrofitting Yeah. If you were retrofitting this, on, so it actually, this, the way you would probably do it is you would put it in your client, you would use the HTML adapter, right? So your app would just take advantage of the HTML adapter because I don't, there's no plugin directly for Django. So whatever your code, your co because, so with the Java servers, you actually add something to the Java server to say, hey, register yourself with Keycloak. But for something like Django, you would probably just use the client libraries that are in your web app itself. Does that make sense? Okay. Any, I think I saw, yeah? Okay. Okay, I don't know that I'm going to show that because remember that I'm the developer part. My recommendation. So the question was, um, in their your testing, you've seen that there is talking, but there I do think there has to be talking between the servers at some point, but I don't think it's on every request, right? Whenever somebody comes in, there's not like a when whenever somebody tries to come into a service, it's not like oh now I've got to go talk back to Keycloak again. I got to talk back. It ha the server has to talk back every once in a while just to say did anything change with the server that I've registered with. Um, but that would be a good thing to ask on the user list, just to make sure. Because I, I won't be able to, again, it would be the yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. I don't know. So we'll save all this all the time. So we're going to take some microservices with different patterns, show how easily we added Keycloak, and then show the magic. Okay? And then, of course, profit. So here's the architecture. So the game, um, the app that we wrote is you have a lot of friends who play Dungeons and Dragons. And I thought this would be quite realistic for most of the audiences I was going to talk to. And we're going to make a random character generator. Now, I will say, how many of you are Dungeons or were Dungeons and Dragons players? OK, and, and so I'm just going to say in advance, this does not actually follow all the rules. OK? It does random character generation, but you can have a cleric with a wisdom of two. All right? Or a, a, ma a wizard with an intelligence of five. I'm, or and paladins can be evil. OK? So, we're not, it's not that good of a generator. But so the idea is we have a big conference and we have a whole bunch of people who are going to use this generator or it's a big service that we're going to make lots of money off of. 
generating this, these characters. And so the idea is people, oops, people come in through the, I'm going to go to this side because I gave that side a lot of love lately. They're going to come in through the player console. There's players who come in. They auth against Keycloak, and then it generates a character for them. And then that character is also, that service passes on to a MongoDB service that's just running in the background. It has no front end to it for the users. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that character and push that character into a MongoDB database. Right? But it's still going to make sure, I don't want this sitting out there wide open. right? So it's, you're going to need that same token to come across. But there's also the admin. And so the admin has to auth, but they have to auth as an admin role. And then they can actually view, they can actually do reads from the Mongo service. Right, uh, players can only do writes to the Mongo service. They cannot read the Mongo service. Is everybody good with that? So very complicated microservice application. You can tell I am a key coder. So everybody go ahead and go there. If you have a laptop open, go. There's the app. For those of you who don't have a laptop, I will show you what it looks like. So it was, what was it again? J1DDGen, bit.ly, which is actually the same one as J1-thestevo.rhcloud. There's the app. That's what it should look like for everybody. Is that what everybody's seeing? No. URL, sorry. I was too fast on the URL? Who invited Jorge? J1 DD Gen. It, oh, this will work in mobile too. That, I mean, that app is pretty complicated. It took a lot of work to adapt it to mobile. It's an HTML page that just shows a list. Now, are people looking at something like this? Okay, go ahead, create your account. This is one of those tests. How are you going to create your account? You can't. What, what button is, whoa, you can't, everybody else can't see it, why I'm joking with everybody. What button, is there a create an account button? No. Did I make this page myself? Well, actually, Stian made the nice, great graphics and the themed it. So you can see it's themed to our great thing. It's not the normal key cloak. But there's no, this is actually being rendered by key cloak, not by my app. So let's go into the admin console. So this is the admin console. Would you like me to show you slides of the admin console, or should I use the real one? The real one? Oh, God. OK. So this is, there's realms within Keycloak. So you can actually have multiple different applications using Keycloak. So this is actually the dragon's realm. The master realm is the realm of the entire. It's funny that it's the realm with Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> anyway, so we call this one dragons. There's the name of it. It's enabled, so it's on. Log in. Ugh, I must have expired. Hold on. So do some people, I, only, I don't want everybody to register right now. So in your mind, think about whether you want to register or not. But don't everybody do it, please. So I'm, I can turn on all these things on or off if I want. Email, my, email as username, edit, be able to edit your username. Do I have a forget password functionality? Verify the email. I haven't set up an SMTP server with this, so none of the emailing you is going to work. So I save. I go back oops, to this page, and I reload. And what's there? On the le right hand side, my left hand side. OK, this is not a trick question. Register. There's a register, thank you. I like giving people easy questions most of the time. Um, so that, how much code did I have to write to make that happen? Zero. Zero. So some, I want, OK, if you haven't decided to register yet, stop and don't do it. OK, did some people register? Did anybody register? Or is everybody like, oh, I'll be the one that doesn't? If you registered, raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you for being so obedient. But I will say, this side of the room, how many laptops do we have? Four, five? Please register now. How do I register? <laughs> Click the register button. No, the link. See the re when you re reload the page, and when you reload the page, you should see new user, register. 
and click that. And I'll show you what you should see. And that's one of the customizable flows. So if we go back into here, right? Uh, let's see, key, email, theme. So this is where we did our themes, right? We can change, if we have different themes, we can change them, right? Account themes, you can even change the different themes for the different pages, right? You can you cache, yeah. We do things like brute force, we actually try to do brute force detection. We do same origin with web pages, right? So I could turn on brute force detection, trying to find someone and like disable that account built in. Here's all the different services that are gonna use this. You have to make these, right? For each one of your services that are gonna do it. So you can have a uh, shared token and stuff. So here's all the different services. It's easy to turn them off or delete them. Here's the roles. It's a very complicated role structure for this. You're either an admin or a player, right? But you can have all sorts of roles. And it can include other roles. Here's the identity providers. We'll come back to this in a second. User federation, this is not set up now, but if we wanted to, we could have LDAP or Kerberos here, right? Here's where I can change things about the authentication. So where the registration form, I do profile validation, I do register user, I do not require a reCAPTCHA. If I wanted to have a reCAPTCHA on that page, all I have to do with that is turn that button, and now I've got reCAPTCHA showing up as well. Right, and then I can also do things like required actions. So that's the flows. You can actually bring in other flows if you want. Here's all the different ones. I can actually also do other required actions. Like you have, there's a terms and condition page. You have to see it, or you don't. Update profile, update password. So that's like if you gave them a password and you want them to update their password, or somebody, somebody got a hold of something in your system and you want to make sure everybody updates their password, turn this on and everybody has to update their password again. Right, you can force them to do it. Configure T, so this is the one if I wanted to do If I do that, now it's, enable, it's requiring people to do two-factor authentication. Or verify email flow. I mean, the, for me as a developer, just this stuff alone, getting a user database with all these features is enough for me to love this. Because even the verify email, who, have they, how many of you have written the verify email piece of your code? And how much did you like that? Not at all. And it was a waste of your time, That's not, you're not an expert in that. I'd much rather have a service that just does that, hook it up to an SMTP server, and it does work, just does it. So we should have some users by now. Right? I think they've changed this flow. You can now make the page longer. Right now, I can only get five people at a time. But these are all users. So uh, let's see. Who is Arden? Is that your real last name? What? No? <laughs> Arden, you are no longer a user. Now, the thing is, I deleted you. You can actually go back in and do it again if you wanted to. I haven't, where was Arden? I heard it from back here. Where's, that's real Arden? Okay. So you could actually go back in and do it. But try to go back, try to go in now without doing the re-registering. I think I've expired you as well, but I don't know if I've actually expired. I did. So he's gone. Right? So that's easy. That's amazing in and of itself there. That's how easy it is to get rid of a user. When like somebody's fired at your, not that this would ever happen in anybody's company, but somebody's fired at your company and you need them out of the system immediately, you just go in and delete. And they're out for all the services. The other thing though I can do, now no one's gonna say who they are. <laughs> Who's Braun? Oh, Darth Vader. Who's Darth Vader? <laughs> huh. Knew you would come to my talk. So I can do this, and I can do it, I can, he's now disabled. I have to save it though first. So this actually means that his account is created, he can't create himself as a new user again, and he should actually be logged out. Are you? So that's actually, you know how you were talking about the HTML5 stuff? So you're asking how it does all that stuff? You're, we're all using browsers here, there's no mobile app. There's actually a hidden, so I, if I remember all the details correctly, this is the one where Stian would say, I know some of this, I don't know all of this, Stian would know all of it. But there's actually a hidden iframe on that log on the page for my app. And it actually that hidden iframe there is to keep polling back to the server. And if I if I disable a user, it actually deletes the token. 
Because there's no way, that's the problem with HTML as opposed to a mobile app. I can't reach back into the web page and take their token away. So that hidden iframe is there so that I can go in and that frame is always polling and it says, oh, that user is no longer valid. I'm deleting their token. So you can actually pull it away from a web user. Yeah? Uh, isn't it always the server side that you want to actually delete the token or like invalid the token? Because if you, as soon as you have, it, as soon as you, you delete. Yeah, I don't know if it actually deletes it. It may invalidate that token. It may do, it does something. See, this is where Stian would have used the right word, and I use the I don't care so much about security, I just want it to work word, which is delete the user. It's whatever you need to do to make sure that user can't come back in again. Sorry that for being, I'm often imprecise, but generally right. That's not always a good thing, because it gets me into trouble a lot. Okay, so I'm, I'll, I like you, Darth, even though, because in the end, I actually think when you are the one who brought balance to the force. It was not Luke Skywalker. It was you who killed the Emperor and thereby brought balance to the force, even though everybody says something else. All right. Um, sessions. So let's see. So that's the realm sessions. No, I don't want to get those right. I don't want to get rid Oh, the you wait, I, there's a way. Let me go back to Darth Vader again. And I don't want to pick on Darth. Let's see who's on the next page. Dev Nation JM. Is Magoo really your last is Re Magoo really your last name? You better have those glasses if your last name is Magoo. <laughs> I think I can do something. I think. Oh yeah, here we go. There's your session. You're logged out. Right? So now when you come back, you'd have to re-auth again. Is that right? If you reload the page? So, I, okay, as a developer, how powerful is it? So I am actually not the greatest developer either. Hard to believe. But how, how great is that as a developer that you just get? And I, I know this may sound like I'm trying to like, market it, but I'm not actually, like, even though it may feel that way. It's actually just me being excited about getting this much out of the box and not having to write it all. It's, do you guys not feel that? Do you guys, any of you feel that? Really? Because then I feel like I'm, am, am I, all right, I'll stop. Because I'm super, I'm super excited about the product just because I think it's really cool for me as a developer. All right, oh, and there's your role mapping. You can see the role mappings. He is not, I can actually, on the fly, make him an admin if I want to, right? But I will not because he didn't really have the glasses. If you actually had those glasses like Mr. Magoo, I might have made you an admin, but not today. All right, so for those of you who are wondering what the app actually did, I don't actually think this user exists anymore because this is actually the Realm user. I actually want to be Steve, and I think that's my password. And you can go ahead and remember me and log in. Sure, save that password. So I, here it is, and I say generate character. <gasps> is that happening for everybody else too? Yes. I, that's my fault because I didn't check the app enough. All the services were up. There's the Mongo service. There's the DD service. It's up. Well, it's going to be a great demo. Everybody at least will be able to off. Sorry, people. This is a problem, too, that it's undefined. It, oh, maybe undefined for me because I'm, for you, for everybody else, when you click on that thing up on the top, the part on this side of the room, when you click on undefined, it actually should have your name there, right? Your username? I don't know why the generate care. Can I just do one set of troubleshooting? I don't want to spend too much time because that's not really why you're here to see my great microservice app. Uh, where's the developer tools? I actually want network. 500, what is it saying? Mm, that's not what I actually wanted to see. All right, never mind. I'm not going to spend any more time to debug this. I'm just going to show you more fe features. Is that okay? Or do you guys want to actually see me try to get this working. <laughs> you kind of do, because you enjoy pain, right? You're like, yeah, I just want to see the guy squirm for a long time. All right, so uh, the other thing that I wanted to show, let's see, where were we in the demo? So I've showed you that. Oh, uh, who has a Twitter account? Raise your hand if you have a Twitter account. Jorge, I know you have one, thank you. Okay, there seems to be a greater density of Twitter account users here. How many of you have a Google account? 
And there's more, there's everybody here has a Google. So I'm going to turn on Twitter first. So I go back to identity providers. There's Twitter. So edit. So in here, I've got my client ID and my client secret. I'm not showing you my secret. There's the read. I set that up. That's all I have to do. I can turn all these on, except this is the only one I really needed to turn on. And save. OK, this half of the room, go ahead and authenticate using Twitter. Yeah. I, I got every, it looks like you have users who authenticate to, and then you're not speaking American, so it was a little hard for me to actually hear what you were saying. So, oh, it's not, not American, I only speak American, you're in the country, speak the language. No, so, I only authentic, hey, once you guys left the Europe, you're dead to me. Um, so, you're Australian, I should have asked you, wait, Say, say the word, when you paint, you're making? No. That's spray painting. Not only are you, like, you're a criminal, too. OK. Well, that's right. All Australians are criminals, right? That's what we learned in history. That's only criminals that, and sheep that got sent down there. So OK, all my joking aside, you have a user who's authenticating to? That was by my app. So the question was, it looked, or not the question, the statement was, and is this, the question was, is this true, is it looks like you are authenticating to the services no matter how deep they go. That's only by my design. So you mean where there's no user at all? There is a way to do that, and Steen would be able to tell you, but I don't know it. I basically, I, I haven't written that. You mean you have like a separate service that's running some sort of cron job, or it's talking to Twitter, pulling all the users in, and then like putting information with them. Right. OK. Steen would know that flow better than I do. It can handle those kinds of flows, like a service to service flow, where you want machine talking to machine. It can do that. I think you would actually, I think you make a systems user and then you somehow do some magic that I haven't read about nor needed to do, so therefore I have not learned how to do it. But you can do it in there, something like that. And then that's another way of saying blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. I don't know. But I know it's there. Wah, wah, wah. wah. Now I sound Australian. What was it? Is it a service account? There you go. Thank you for having used Keycloak more than me. Yes? I have a question. What about certificates? Uh, if you use the yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. I know it handles it. I don't know. You're saying if you want to pass certificates around rather than? Yes. I, I don't know. Again, remember any of those deep security questions? Not coming from me. Sorry. That's, and I don't want to keep. I tried to get Steen to come. His talk didn't get accepted. His other talk didn't get accepted. Maybe what I should do is just add Steen on all my talks and force him to come. Thank you. Yeah. Can you add custom attributes to the token besides the store? Yes. Whatever you store, you can, you can do that. In, because it's OpenID and not OAuth, you, we have roles, and you can put other things on the token as well. I know that for a fact. I don't know how you do it in the UI, though. OK? And there's also a REST API. For those of you who don't like UIs and want to actually script stuff, like one of the things Stian wrote for me, just because he knows how to do it and it would be faster for him, is he wrote a bulk deleter for users. Because after I give this demo, usually I'll have, like if the room is full, I'll have 300 users or 100 users in there. And that would mean me going in and deleting them all by hand. He uses the REST API to go and delete all the users from a realm if you want to. So uh, was there another question? We have 15 minutes, or like 13 minutes left, is that correct? About 13? Yeah? OK. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to do? Oh, so I can show you. That, so here's the other thing. So the admin console, which will not be able to show us anything. So if I go to J1 admin, that's secured, right? 
If I use that role that I had before, this one, Steve, which is, oh, I'll show you that role. I don't actually even have to tell you, I can prove it. So if I go to users, where's users? Users, and I search on Steve. Oh, did the Twitter login work for everybody? Okay, before I do that then, let's actually let everybody log in to get a broken app. Um, enabled. You can now log in using Google as well. And there's a whole bunch of other, I don't remember all the different identity providers you can add. Let me see if he's got a list here. They do. So they, by default, this is in the older version, they may have added others. You can use GitHub, Facebook, LinkedIn, Stack Overflow, Twitter, and what was the other one? Google. And then if you have a user-defined one, like you have your own OpenID provider inside of um, your company, you can use that as well. So these are just right out of the box, set to go. So I love this so much. All right. Um, now, back to users. If I search on Steve, that's me, right? That was the one I logged into the app with. And the user's enabled. And then when I want to look at my role mappings, you can see that this is only a player. <laughs> I'm such a player. Um, this is only a player, and my effective roles are player. And so this is the admin console again. So if I try to go in as Steve, I get this, right? But if I go back again, and the other, if you remember the, the search results, there's another account called Super Steve, right? And that one is both a player and an admin. And so if I go back to this one, and I do Super Steve, oh, I used the wrong password. Ugh. <laughs> I think I typed, do I have cap locks on? I can't even tell if I have cap locks. That's the one thing I don't like about this Lenovo. I can't even tell if I have cap locks on. Hold on. No. <laughs> Open a text editor to check if you have. <laughs> OK. No. Well, so I don't remember my password. So how am I going to fix that? Yeah. I can actually type in my password. What? What, should I, what, what did you want me to use? Wait, say it louder, because I can't hear. I don't know. Well, you're saying it'll have to, it'll reset me? Oh, because I'll put, I have to reauthenticate. No, I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to put this in. So I'm going to do some super secret password, like something like password. No, I actually shouldn't tell you what I'm doing. I don't trust you guys. Um, and if I wanted to make that temporary, oh, it is temporary. I don't want that to be temporary. Now I've actually reset the password. If I had made it temporary, that means the next time that user authenticated, they would have to change their password. Do you want me to make it temporary and see that in action? Yeah? Yeah? Thanks. <laughs> All right. I'll, this password I know I can make, unless someone logs in before me. So I'll tell you what it was. So now I'll reset the pass. Oh, yeah. My bad typing is real funny. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God. It's not working. OK. So now, no, I do not want to reload the form. Uh, yes, you can. Hold on. But let me try this. Super Steve. So I sent an email to myself that said, here's your temporary password. So something's not working at all. Why? Who knows? You, why isn't it working? OK, fine. This? No, oh, you know why? Because 
so does anybody know why? You already logged in. Exactly, and I haven't logged out. So I can't. So, okay, how am I going to handle that? I showed you how I can handle that. Exactly, thank you. Who said that? Nice, not the Australian. I thought it was the Australian. And you've got a baseball cap on. You're American, right? Yeah, America! <laughs> now, we knew the answer to that. This is where you're supposed to say something about gun violence as a comeback to me or something. All right, so users, authentic, wait, I've got to go to users, go to Steve, Steve, sessions. So I should have two, right? Because I authenticated to two different apps. So I can say, oh, I just want that one, log out. Good. Now I reload this page. Good. Now. I should be able to put in Steve with the password that was temporary. Super Steve. Thank you. Pair programming. <laughs> it's because Jorge is here. OK, it was Super Steve. I don't even know what password I put in. I, that's right, I didn't. No, I did put. What? OK, two people talking at once. All right. Do you, is everybody, re, everybody really wants to see this badly, I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah, especially because I'm failing so miserably. OK, new password. Temporary. Change it. Actually, I'll take the mic, drop it right now. That's up. The talk's done. Thanks, everyone, for coming. All right, hold on. So now if I come in as Super Steve, then I get to see this app again. Again, this is here because I don't actually have a, this defined. This is actually our name. And what it should show, if this was actually, if all of our services were working, um, is this would show in that list all the users who had actually authenticated, and, and all the characteristics about them. Right. So uh, what, was the, what was the other? There's somebody who wanted to see something else. Policies. policies. Password policies, yes. Uh, and I have to remember where that is. This is where you see me fumble around with the, the interface. Um, login? No. Does anybody, if you know off the top of your head, not looking at anybody in particular, no, you don't remember? OK, it's, I forget exactly where it's. Mm, authentication, probably. Password policy, there it is. So I can add any, can you see that? There's a long list of things I can do, right? Yeah. Can this create API keys? I'm not sure. I'm, I would, Jorge, do you know? Is that, why we're putting, is that why we were putting API man in front of this? I don't think this can create. Yeah, I can create API keys because you're, <laughs> I just needed to think for a second, and that's a lot harder for us Americans. Um, uh, the, it's because our language is so complicated. Um, the, basically, the API key, all it is is it's a user. right? So the user just has to go in and off, and then I guess you would, you mean, can they create a token for them that, that they can then pass in? That's actually what you're asking. Sorry? Somebody said something about related to that? Oh, then don't say anything yet. Because I want to see where I can get, I think there's a way to get that information, but I don't know for sure. And if I can't find it, it doesn't mean it's not there. Okay? But if I can find it, then we do know. But I'd like for the user, let's just view all the users. Oh, and by the way, I want to just show something else about the users while we're here, even though I said for everybody else not to talk. Um, if I go to the next page, did anybody log in with Twitter or Google? 
Where is it not? Oh, I know who that is. All right. It should show up event. Are we going through the same list? No. There, you see the usernames? So anybody who came in through Twitter, their username will have Twitter appended in front of their username. Yeah? Wait, wait, hold on. Distracting me like that. I was still trying to answer the question back there. Sneaky lots of questions guy. All right, the answer was for the API keys. So if I go to a user, that's passwords. No. No. I don't know exactly where I would get it. I mean, there's their ID. I don't know. I, I'm almost positive there's a way to do it. I just don't know out of the box. Sorry. OK, now, sneaky question guy, what's your question? Could you show the code of the services? How Thank you. That wasn't even a sneaky question. That was what I was, is that what you said, too? You, this is like this little mind mill. Are you all at the same company, or are you just really close friends? No, not at all. You don't even know each other? Yeah. Freaky. Um, <laughs> if I, what? <laughs> what did you say? All right. I didn't even hear. So the first thing is, if I don't get, because we only have two minutes left. Um, the thing is, that's my GitHub account, the Steve Zero. If you search for J1 in my repos, that's all the different repositories that were necessary to put the non-working demo together that used to work the last time I gave this talk, but I didn't go all the way through. Now I've learned I need to go all the way through. So for example, here's the user interface, the, the main app. This is one is just using mobile. Right? So here's the index.html. Right? We load a source, which is the key cloak JavaScript. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Yep. OK. So we load the key. That's the libraries that does all the nice stuff for us so we don't have to write all that fancy, yucky stuff. Right? And so on load, we do a key cloak init. All right? And we check have they signed in. And if the check login frame interval is one second, and on success, we say, if the key cloak is authenticated, yes. If it's not, log them in, put them on the login page. Does that make sense? And then on auth log out, key cloak log in with nothing in it, and I guess that logs them out. Authenticated, this is just saying, if they're authenticated, then we actually, that's how that name, remember your email showed up in the top left for those who authenticated? That's how we put it there. We just insert the HTML for it, okay? And then here is where we actually do the request. So if that page had worked when we said generate the character, this is what it actually does. And so this is the part where we do the actual passing off the, remember we got a token back? As the client in the HTML page, we need to pass that in to the service. So this is the service, j1dd slash ws slash kr slash dd. That, when I go to that, that should, if things had worked properly, generate a character. With that request, I'm setting the request header, authorization bearer, and I, from my key cloak object, I grab the token and put it in the header. Does that make sense? So I basically, I've already authenticated, I got the token sitting in my HTML store somewhere, and the key, key cloak has as an object, and so I need to set the request header, authorization bearer plus the actual token. And I send that across, and it, Gives it to the right place on my service. Yeah. Key cloak is a library that uh, comes out directly from key cloak project, or is it? Yes. Key no, no, no. Why, yes. Yes, I did. No, it comes directly from the, it's like, an, remember how we said we have client adapters? This is the HTML client adapter. Okay, cool. Make sense? Yeah. I thought, wait, I thought by answering his question, I already answered your question. Not this time? OK, go ahead. On the server side, do you want to see what it looks like on the server side? Yes. OK. You want to see? All right. So this is actually, sorry? Yeah, this is a Java service. So, and I'm using EAP, uh, EAP, six. I know all of you have already switched to seven as soon as it came out this morning, but I'm using six here. Um, nothing else exciting on this page, I don't think. No. Can you go back to that? You were using key cloak with EAP six? Yeah, but yes. But, cause I, but I could use it with WebSphere. I could use it with any Java EE server. Thank you. OK, I'll show you how. It, and then there's instructions to how to set it up with all of them. 
Time's up, so if you need to leave, you can leave. I'm going to keep going until I do this part of showing the Java part, and then I'm going to wrap up, just so that everybody doesn't think they're stuck here until the end of eternity with me. Uh, there's a, so it was J1DD, right? So there was two things we actually needed to do. This is running on the old version of OpenShift, but I didn't need to talk about that because, so the first thing is, in standalone.xml, I have to add this piece that says there's the key cloak adapter. So I actually, in the, in the jars for JBoss, I added this module. And then, in the standalone, I've got this module. So I add the module in JBoss. For those of you who know what that is, that's the extension manager. And then I, I tell the standalone XML, hey, load this module. Everybody good with that? So now the server knows that it should talk to Keycloak. Oh, the one thing I forgot to show you, and this is the part, are you still here? Yes, you are. And this is the part that I don't, uh, remind me that I want to come back to something for you. Because okay. I don't want to break out of this flow. But I have something else to show with the HTML part. OK, so we enabled the server, and it's good to go there. And if you look in modules, we added, th this is the module right here, the org.keycloak. It's all added in there. The part that's now interesting is in our code. So we go to up one more level. So we go into source main, Java, or OpenShift, web service, because that's the only place it matters. There's the generator. So it's slash care slash DD, is that right? Or is it just, no, it's just there. So this is just JAXRS. How many of you are using JAXRS? If you, how many of you are using Java EE or JEE server? And if you're not using JAXRS, I don't know why. It's like the, it makes me feel like a Node developer. Like I feel all hip and cool like the Node guy here. It's like so easy to write web services. All right, so here's the get DD, right? So there's the actual request. It does a whole bunch of URL mapping. So make a character for Mongo. Here's the request. So the first thing I do is I do security context, get user principle, get name, right? So when we added that module, that actually put Keycloak as the security context for the server. Oh, no, there's something else I forgot to show you. That's not true. That's not true. You're right. Did I ask you to help correct me, though? No. It's actually in, I have to go to the web XML. Thank you. Thank you for keeping me honest. So if I go to web app and I go to web imp, there's, so there's the secret. Don't take a picture of that. No, just kidding. So there's the JSON that's actually where we have the shared secret between the server, the Keycloak server, and our EAP server, the application itself, right? When I did that, what I said, did before, that enabled the entire EAP server to talk to Keycloak. Then you have to do each one of these for each application you write, right? Because each app has to say, I am this app. So there's the server. Where the auth is happening, there's the public key, there's the secret for this app, right? And so this is how it knows to do all that stuff. Use the resource mapping, enable cores, and the principal attribute is email. I think this is some of where we can do, someone else asked me about adding other stuff. I think it may have, adding other things into the open ID, is that, you asked that? I think it's, some of it comes through on this, but I'm not sure. So you do that, you have that file there, and then, right, that's all the JAXRS stuff. There's a security constraint. So that's where we're actually doing it. So we're saying anything that has the URL patterns, ws slash star, they have to be a player. They have to have the role of player. And then we're saying that method is key cloak, and the security role is player as well. So that's just standard at that point. That's standard Java EE stuff. Now I can show you the code. In the code, there's nothing special. That's the other thing I want to say. There's nothing special at that point. I could not, that login page would still pop up even if I did nothing in my code. Because that web XML is what is saying anything coming to this page has to have the role of player. Does that make sense? From that point on, it's up to me whether I actually want to take advantage of it or not. That's all I need to do to secure my endpoint. I don't need any of this rest of this stuff if I don't actually want to use any of the information, if I just want to know that they're a player. 
if I actually want to use it, this shows you how to use it. So if I go into the web service, which is where I actually make the request, so here I'm saying get the name of the user from the security context. That's standard Java EE as well. And then I'm telling the char character, in this case, is the D&D &D character that we're generating. And so I'm setting its name to be the same name as the user. So that's how you can get stuff from the security context. Really, though, <coughs> I could actually, I could, that step up above the security context that got get user principle, all that, I could have replaced that all with the key cloak security context. The reason why I need to actually get a key cloak security context here at this step is because Java, key, Java security contexts don't store as much information as key cloak needs. Right, so if you just need the stuff that's in the security context, the key cloak context, I mean the regular security context can use that. But if you want some of the extended stuff that comes from OpenID, so like for an ex in this example, I'm actually getting the name, key, the key cloak security context class that get name. Then from that name, from that actual security context, like from that name, that's how I get my token. Because remember, this one needs to talk to Mongo, and it needs to authenticate to Mongo. Do you remember that? You have a question, question guy, go. Because you're asking questions that everybody else is going to ask. You're good? You understand it? OK, so once I've got that token, does everybody understand that's how I got my actual token? That's my key cloak token. So now I'm making a request, and I do the exact same thing. I'm talking to the Mongo service, authorization bearer token, add header content type, I'm sending across JSON, and then it's, that's it, and I do a normal post. That is absolutely not production code. I would never use HTTP, like the HTTP post object from the Java's core libraries. Please never do that. The purpose of this, though, is to demonstrate how to get a token and how to pass it along. Okay, so however you pass it along, you're going to need to add it to the header as the bearer token. Okay, and that's it. All done. So that's how much it, oh yeah, the whole thing's done. So sorry I went over, but some people asked too many questions, and some people didn't speak proper English. So uh, I hope you enjoyed, sorry? It's true, exactly. You just didn't speak proper American. Um, so thanks for staying. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope it was good. There's a new version of KeyCloak out. The newest version, what it really was, was getting it really locked down to a product, but they've also added more fine-grained permission controls. So you can do more with the permissions that you give users or don't give users. Yeah, question. Uh, this stuff, is that like going to end up in a product? Or? In a product? It is a product now. It is Red Hat SSO. So if you go down to a booth and you, or you see a sign for Red Hat SSO, that is KeyCloak. So you can purchase it now and use it. It's actually, if you use the new version of OpenShift Online, actually, not just that, all, if you log into the portal for Red Hat, that's actually using Red Hat SSO under the hoods. Okay, it's, I mean, I think it's talking to IPA as one, of the as one of the providers, but our internal ops team is now using KeyCloak to run Red Hat authentication. So, and it's used for OpenShift Online now, the new version of Online. There was going to be, there is still going to be API man being shipped with OpenShift, which is a way to manage APIs. Now that we've acquired 3Scale though, that kind of changes things. I don't have any official comment on that, other than it changes things. But API man had, because I can't officially say what that whole 3Scale API means things, but API man had KeyCloak integrated as well. So that's part to what you were saying about generating API tokens. It had KeyCloak generated. I'm sure they were doing something in there to generate API tokens for the people who are using API Man. API Man was a way to build APIs to your services and manage them from one place. So, thanks everyone, and don't forget to review the uh, the review the talk if you can. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>